Hi, my name is Rose Troche, and I am the writer, director, uh, producer, and editor of Go Fish, uh, which won the Teddy Award in 1994, so way back in the day. And uh, I want to wish the Teddy Awards a happy 30th birthday, and I wish I was there for the party. Um, I can't. I could be there if you flew me out. So, and my little Teddy Award also says, "Happy birthday, birthday." Well, Rose, thank you very much for doing this interview with us. Thank you very much for bringing the Teddy. <laughs> yes, I think this Teddy actually has nipples, so that's. <laughs> You know, I just noticed that. That's very cute. Well, it's well, we we are queer film awards, so we also have all genders in there. Let's have your nipples. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you you won the first Teddy Award in 1994 with Go Fish. Um, back at that time, new queer cinema was quite new still, and that was the first movie that actually depicted. Um, female homosexuality in a movie, in a big movie. It won the award. Um, how did the movie come to happen? How, how did you come up with the idea? What was the story behind it? Um, I, you know, Go Fish really came out of um, uh, activism at that time. Like, I was very, I was very, I was in ACT UP, I was in Queer Nation, um, as was Guinevere Turner. And, um, and I was also in film school. So I really wanted to um, kind of further the idea of like lesbian visibility, which we had, you know, we did like kiss-ins, we did, you know, like we were trying to, you know, make ourselves more visible and, and Go Fish definitely came out of that, um, that philosophy. And as a matter of fact, I think if, if, if it weren't for Act Up and Queer Nation, I don't know that that film would have gotten made because a lot of the people who helped make that film and worked on that film were all people that I met, you know, in, in Act Up and in Queer Nation. So it really like kind of was a film that, that was born out of activism. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the atmosphere at that time, the atmosphere of activism and the surrounding in which the, the movie came up? Um, you know, I think it was, it was very funny because I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Bob Hope last night, Bob Hawk, I'm sorry, I was talking to Bob Hawk last night. And, um, and we were talking about, you know, sort of the, the, the early 90s and, and just losing so many friends, you know. And I think that, I think there was something about telling a simple story about the simplicity of love between two same-sex people that was, that felt needed at the moment. Um, and... And I think, you know, it, it, it definitely, it, it's such a fun and, and hopeful movie, but I think it was born out of a sadness of losing people and of, and, of, and of not understanding why the world wasn't looking or paying attention uh, when, we, when we seemed to be losing so many people. And so I, I, I think, you know, it was, it was really about not wanting to take it anymore and wanting to be seen and heard. Um, so it really came out of that. Hmm. So would you say that, that the gay rights movement in the early 90s, the new queer cinema and all that, is also a movement that came to be so strong because of the AIDS crisis? Oh, I definitely think so. I definitely think so. I think, I think we, we didn't really realize how, how much kind of we would be ignored in the world. You know, how much... Um, health reform wouldn't happen, how much like someone, you know, it took a very long time in this country, in the United States, for even the president at that time to, to, to acknowledge the fact that there was, you know, that, that, that AIDS was something that was devastating the community. Um, you know, it took forever for them to change uh, the, the, you know, there, there were, you know, you know, the specifications around how a woman can become HIV positive, you know, what were the, what were the, what were the, you know, the, the, what would manifest itself in, in one's body, you know, like all of these things that like no, nobody was being, you know, I think we were, we were shocked at how ignored we were, you mm. know, and that was a real wake up call. But so yeah, I think a lot, I think a lot of queer cinema at that time was really coming out of, coming out of like a, 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 a 
a realization of really being a second class citizen. I think for a lot of, I think especially for a lot of white gay men, it was really kind of a, the, one of the first times in their lives that they were like, oh, we are just, we're absolutely second class citizens in this world. And, and I think that that, that anger um, will a movement and, and fuel definitely, definitely, definitely the two are, in, the, the two intersect. I think about all the, all the films of that time, you know, like Poison and Swoon and, and Greg Araki's early work, you know, I think all of that was, was impacted by what was happening in the world and particularly what was happening in the, in the LGBT community. Hmm. But you were talking, or you were saying that it was mainly something that focused on gay white men. How was it with the with the lesbian visibility in that crisis? I think you know it. It, it was always. It's a very funny. Um, it's a very funny thing because you know it, it, we were. You know we we were there as allies, and and you know we were we were certainly not losing people in numbers like like the men were. You know, and I think that that. You know, in 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 wanting to be there for for the gay community, I, I feel like you know there was a sense of our own invisibility um, that was being brought to the surface as well. And um, and yeah, I, I you know I, I definitely GoFish was born out of something like that. You know, was you know we wanted everybody wanted to be seen, everybody wanted their voice to be heard. Um, mm -hmm. And you were saying that you were in, <laughs> that's, that's okay, you were saying that it was like um, being an ally, would you also say that the queer un community got united in that time? Would you, or maybe even yeah. say that the queer un community actually started in that time? I don't know if it, if it started in that time, because I think there are pockets in history where there was a, there was a queer community in, in various places, I mean, in, in, in Germany for sure, and, and you know, in parts of the US, uh, but certainly we did unite around around we had to we had to we had to show the world that we had numbers you know it was very important it was very important for us all to be on the streets for us to be getting arrested for us to you know for us to be out there for us to be allies mm. i think it still is but you know <laughs> and now looking back at this context how would you place your movie in this situation like what would you say is is the relevance now looking back 20 years later of your movie um, I think at, I think at the time, you know, there wasn't a, a film that was just simply a love story that was not fraught. I mean, you know, there was there was I suppose there was Desert Hearts and Clear of the Moon, like that that had that were the, the predecessors, I think, of of Go Fish. Um, but we really wanted, we really felt as though the community that we were from, that kind of uh, urban sort of young community was not being represented in, in the same way. You know, people who, like, people with roommates, people with, you know, like, you know, like, that kind of the way in which we make our own families had not been represented, and Go Fish is definitely of that vein, and of, you know, like, I mean, as, as was sort of the L word, you know what I mean? It, it was like, there there is something about uniquely queer about the way in which we create our families around the friends we make, you know? And I mean, I have friends who are my, everyone from Go Fish. I mean, every, I just have friends who have been my friends for, you know, 20 plus years. Um, and and it's it's so uniquely, you know, a, a, a something that we do in our community. Mm -hmm. but the, and that was, that was, I think, one of the first times that was really represented in the film. But does that mean that it, one of the aims sort of was to show ordinary um, queer life? Yeah. To demystify it, to not show it as as sort of lauded or 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 de depraved, you know, it was really about sh about showing how we exist in in a, in a real way. I mean, you know, like I mean, I remember a lot of people thinking that the film was documentary, and it's you know, it's definitely not a documentary film at all. But but you know, d d people were plucked from our lives, you know. I mean, it's a it's a film of uh, it, it's us and our friends. And if they weren't our friends, by the time we were done with the film, they were our friends, you know. Hmm. But, uh, you know, we, we definitely wanted to make a, a, a movie by, for, and about women, you know. Hmm. Even though there were quite a few men who worked on the film. <laughs> but, uh, 
that was that was very important, you know, for us to kind of hold ourselves up in that way. <laughs> well, later the L word, L word came out, which also was extremely important. I mean, it was on television, at least in Germany, it was very important. I actually don't know how it was in the United States, but in Germany, it was a very important series because it was the very first time that lesbian life was shown on television to that expand, like everyday life. Right. So how would you say was this next step? What was the way to get to this next step to do to do a series about that? Well, I think each I think each each piece carves the way. I think that I think that without I think without Claire of the Moon and without without, you know, Desert Hearts, I don't know that Go Fish would have been made. You know, without Go Fish would you know, high art been, have been made, would, you know, like, what, like, and, and et cetera, et cetera, you know, like, we're all part of some kind of, uh, um, we're, we're all, we all take our place in history, and we're all sort of eroding some kind of bias, I believe, with the work. So all of these pieces kind of led up to, to the L word, and the L word is, is, my goodness, is, 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 it's, it's, it's less sort of real life and a little bit more aspirational. You know what I mean? It's not like every gay woman who walks in a room and sees another beautiful woman ends up, you know, have, getting to have sex with her. You know, like if it's the L word world, then yeah, you, you do. So it's a little bit more, you know, it's a little more aspirational than, uh, uh, and I think that that's why everybody, I think that's why men and women and straight women watch the show. I mean, the women had power, you know, they, you know, bet could yell at her boss and, and, you know, lose her job and, Sorry, lose her job and get a better one. Excuse me, one second. No problem. That's my, that's my doorbell. I've got a package. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Is it a it's teddy bear? A, no, it's screeners because ah, it's uh, it's the uh, it's award season. Um, so I get all the you know I get movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. So anyway, with with the L word, I think that I think that. Um, I think the L word paved the way for, you know, things like Orange is the New Black. I think that, you know, and the things that happen on Transparent, you know, uh, I think it's, and I think Queer as Folk paved the way for the L word, you know. I mean, really paved the way. That show definitely paved the way for the L word. Um, you know, and everybody sort of makes their contribution and, and, and erodes this sort of mountain that's in the way of progress. And I think every, you know, it's 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 wonderful that, that everything can take its place in history. Hmm. Well, just a few years back, um, Concussion came out. You were the producer of Concussion. And well, that was sort of the next step I had the feeling because in that movie, we have a lesbian couple and you could say they made it. I mean, they have a good income, they have a nice house, they have friends, everything. They, they have actually sort of a happy life, but they are not really happy in their relationship. It, the movie, well, focuses on the relationship problems. Does that sort of show that homosexuality is accepted now? It, it arrived at the center of society? It is there, they made it? Um, they're definitely a middle class family. I mean, they're definitely like an upper middle uh, class family. I think, you know, and Stacy will speak, I think really, it's a very good question and I, and I think it's a really good question to posit to Stacy uh, when you speak to her. But um, I, I think that there is that, that notion of, of well, first, I think there's the malaise of marriage, you know, of being married for, for decades and, and sort of, you know, looking at the same person and, 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 and sort of swallowing what it is, what is your needs. And I think that's a universal thing in all marriages. I mean, you have to work hard to keep a marriage going, to keep it fresh, to be present and aware. And, you know, whereas... Whereas, like, 20 years ago, we used to talk about, like, lesbian bed death. And it's not really just a lesbian thing. We understand that now. You know, it used to be that we were, like, we just took all of our self-loathing and, like, called it, you know, like, put labels on it and, and, and made it our own, you know. Um, and I think that, um, you know, I, I think what's very different about concussion is that it's telling a story of a marriage. It's telling a story of it's, it's, it's no longer, like, just a gay story. I think that I think that you know it's a, it's really much more a story about that class that that the, the the longevity of a relationship and what you do with it um and I think as far as like as far as the 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 queer part I think there is 
in that world, when you're alone in that world of that middle class world and, and, and you, you're accepted by everybody, but you still feel different. You still feel like you're working towards a validation. And that is, that is the underlying, I think, tension in that film is that there's still the gay couple that lives next door. You know, there's still, she still can't talk to people about, really about her marriage. You know, she can go so far with her friends, but I don't know how much she can reveal. And so she, you know, she turns inside herself and, and then goes to these other extremes mm. to fix a problem that she's feeling, which is, you know, the result of a midlife crisis in the middle of a, you know, mid-marriage crisis, you know, all of its sort of, you know, it's a perfect storm in that film. And yeah, it is, it, it is like that kind of narrative would not have been told before. <clears throat> I remember seeing high art and, and thinking, oh my goodness, this is like a story about artists and they're queer, you know, and, and, you know, people who change the genre or change the way those stories were told. It used to always be about being queer first, then, you know, et cetera, et cetera, then plot twist, you know, but it was really sort of wonderful and refreshing once narratives began, you know, and talk about like looking back at the Teddy Awards and everything, when narratives began just being like, oh, I don't know, we're just a couple and these are the problems that we're having. You know, when sort of, when sort of queerness came, got off, you know, like kind of went, went to the like C story line, you know, but wasn't like the A story line. Hmm. Well, I have the feeling that this is sort of a tendency in queer filmmaking at the moment that the focus shifts away from the, the problems you have because you are queer to problems that people have that are queer. Like long time relationships, for example, in your movie, also in the movie by RSX that he released a few years ago. And well, I have the feeling that this is one of the, the tendencies, at least in the, in the Western countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I definitely think that narratives are, I, I mean, everything that I write that is, that is queer is, you know, I mean, it's, it's part of the storyline, but it's not the main story of it. It's really kind of like, I think, I think also a lot of us are getting, you know, a lot of people who made movies sort of back in the day, we're all, we're all at an age where those are not the stories that we're interested in telling, you know, we're interested in telling stories about like, you know, what it's like to not have domestic partnership, like Ira's movie, you know, what it's like to live apart after a bunch of years or not be validated in the world, you know, like it, for like practical reasons, you know, and, and those are, those are the different stories that are being told now. Um, you know, and I think, I think the stories of like origin stories are being told more in the trans community, you know, like you see stories of like becoming, you know, like, like of, of, of transition and, and, those narratives are there um, because it's the beginning of showing the world who you are, you know, and a lot of our, a lot of the reason why we make our work is to make people understand that to not villainize us, to not, you know, to, to humanize us, to, to, to say like, we are not, we, we, we are not to be feared. We're just, you know, we're to be loved. We're as complex and as different and, you know, and, and wonderfully so, and that's the reason why most of us make work, mm. you know? And that's what the fish was. It was really to just be like, we're just ladies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been making movies for a very long time. What does queer filmmaking mean to you? Would you say there is something like queer filmmaking? There's definitely still, there's definitely still a community and there's definitely, yeah, I mean, I I still love a good gay festival. I still love, like, you know, appreciating queer work. I love that the Teddies exist. I really do. I, I think that that it's amazing. And, and, and I feel so happy and validated. My goodness, no one throws a bigger and better party. Wow. <laughs> Nobody. I mean, I just, um, you know, Mardi Gras? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, you know, it's, it's such a, such an amazing celebration and such a, a special thing. And, and I think you know the, the, the there there's still community, um, but I but I feel like it's not as intensely focused as it as it was because everybody has their own interests in all different places. You know what I mean? Like I'm making virtual reality work right now, you know, and and taking on different subject matters, you know, and 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 but you know there there is still that queer community that's that's really um, 
beautiful and uh, that I really appreciate so much. Like I love Outfest and like and like you know and and Frameline and like I just you know it it warms my heart. You know, but I, you know, I do think that there are a lot of people who ask, you know, is this, is this, is this necessary anymore? Um, and it's a question, you know, I love a big gay party. So, you know, I'm, I'm always like, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from the parties, how would you answer this question? I mean, it is a good question. Uh, it, you mean, is it necessary anymore yep. to have queer festivals and to have, to have LGBT? Um, I still think it is. I think that sometimes we look at these things from the the from the big cities, from the coasts, as we say here, you know, and I don't know that that's how the rest of the world still is. I think that that we're a little bit ahead of ourselves, thinking that it's all done now. It's all like you know, oh, you can get married and blah blah blah, and it's all done. Like everybody, pack up your your all your queer complaints and leave the building, you know. But it's really not. There there are a lot of people, and it, and it's always surprising to me to still meet people like almost always recent transplants to like one of the coasts like I either meet people in LA or New York who recently moved to the big cities who will be so grateful for work that's come out or talk about how when they were growing up the, the L word was the one thing that they would like secretly watch and like made them feel like they weren't alone and you know as long as those stories exist I think that it's I think that we're still doing good work, you know, and I still think that there's a reason for a presence of a queer festival. I think there, as long as there's like, you know, some, some person who's coming out, whether they're, whether they're a teenager or they're 70, you know, to have a, have a place to go to, to watch their first gay movie, to, to be around a community is still powerful and is still important. Mm -hmm. So I'd say at the moment, yeah, I'd still... I still see a reason. Well, we already talked a few times about the Teddy Awards. So how, how was it actually for you to win the Teddy Awards? How did it feel? How did you react? Shocking. Why? Yeah. I mean, you know, Go Fish was such a whirlwind. And it, it was, I, I, just, I didn't even know what was happening. You know, I was just, I was too young and naive to even know sort of what was, what the, the, the beauty of everything that was happening. So a lot of that had to be kind of in retrospect where I, you know, kind of took it in and was like, that was amazing or that was like something that's rare and not going to happen over and over again in your life, you know. Um, but I think I just was like, I, I mean, my goodness, just filled with such joy and I was so proud. And, you know, there was nothing like, like you know, getting on that big stage and just being like, oh, my God, uh, you know, it just, you know, it's overwhelming. Hmm. It's really overwhelming. And would you say that, that the Teddy Award had an impact on, on the movie and the way the movie was perceived after the festival? I'm certain that it did. I'm certain, you know, I mean, I, I think any time you get a big award, you know, you become an award-winning film. And it's wonderful to be the maker of an award-winning film, you know. It's, it's absolute validation. It's, you know, I think people... And I think especially over the years, I think people have come to really look at the, the, the films that have won the Teddy and, you know, and kind of say like, oh, I'm going to look at, I'm going to, I'm going to pay attention to that film. Uh, that film won this, this wonderful award. Hmm. So, yeah, I think it, it definitely kind of put a stamp on, on Go Fish and, and, you know, sort of helped people to take it more seriously, you know. So um, what, what is something that you would wish for for the future of the Teddy Awards? I would just I would wish it a very happy birthday and keep on going.